Welcome. Well, you are at home with Jim and Joy, and you are an important part of our EWTN family. And a blessed first week in Advent to you. And if you're watching EWTN, they have the little candle lit up in the corner, and they're reminding you that you need to be ready, you need to slow down, and we need to be prepared. So you're an important part of our family, and we would love for you to send us an email with a question or a comment to jimandjoy at EWTN.com. Well, again, our guest today is the fabulous Jim Tui. He was a trusted advisor and personal friend of Mother Teresa of Calcutta for 12 years. And now, because of that experience, he authored a beautiful book that I encourage you to go out to EWTNRC.com and purchase. Mm -hmm. It's called To Love and Be Loved, and it's a personal portrait of Mother Teresa. And, you know, we, I was looking at our house, and we have just about every coffee table book of Mother Teresa <laughs> with all yeah. the photographs and, yeah. you know, all of her sayings. And, you know, um, I yeah. really encourage you to get it. And it has beautiful pictures in it and um, a, a excellent story of his journey and what Mother did and what God did with his one beautiful little nun who said yes and never stopped saying yes to Jesus. And now the order has 5,100 sisters and they are in 139 countries. So you wanna be a part of how God's moving and really that we got to see her in our lifetime, that we saw her on television, we saw her on uh, Time Magazine yeah. and, and how the world just exploded. Um, because of her presence. To love and be loved. It's not just a title for a book. It's what mother really mm -hmm. taught and really believed. We need to love for our own sake because those who lose their lives will find their lives. But we also need to be loved and to allow ourselves to be loved by God and others. So we'll be right back. Plenty more to come to love and be loved. Uh, Jim Tui is with us, a personal portrait of Mother Teresa. Don't go away. We'll be right back. Welcome back. Well, you're at home with Jim and Joy, and today our guest again is Jim Tui. He was a trusted advisor and personal friend to Mother Teresa of Calcutta for 12 years. And because of that experience, he authored a beautiful book called To Love and Be Loved. And it's a personal portrait of Mother Teresa. And I encourage you to go to EWTNRC.com, purchase that book, and give it to family members for Christmas. It's a great read and they will be blessed to have it. Good. Well, we are excited to have you back. Thank and you. You, you covered so much yesterday, but today, tell us about, you have a, a, an organization called, right, agingwithdignity.org. Go to that website. So for 12 years, you had a, a personal view of mother's suffering and dying. How did mother Teresa of Calcutta, who always handled everybody else's suffering and dying. How did she handle her own suffering and dying? How did she inspire dying? you in the ministry that you now have? Both great questions. Uh, I think she was prepared to go home to God. I think every day she was aware that her health was fragile. Uh, but she knew that she'd come home from God and was going home to God and mm -hmm. that God numbered her days. And so I don't think there was ever a time where the, the, the real, realization that her home was in heaven was far from her. And obviously when she got much sicker, and she always wanted to be in her own bed and die mm -hmm. in her own bed, which she ended up doing. And, and mm -hmm. the 14th chapter of the book gives a very detailed account of her last 48 hours. And it just showed of how her whole life was centered around the church, around the sacraments, around her sisters, her love of Jesus. And, and she was busy up until a few hours before she died, mm -hmm. signing letters and 
So it, it, she had a remarkable end of her life and, of course, a beginning in eternity. And in terms of uh, inspiring me, you know, uh, I talked to Mother Teresa in 1996 about the, the movement toward euthanasia and assisted suicide and how we had to find a way to help people have a hopeful vision of their end game. Mm -hmm. and to help people plan for and discuss what to do in times of serious illness. And so I started Aging with Dignity to oppo oppose euthanasia. Mm -hmm. I really worry about it. I think it's a wildfire because it's always easier to kill someone than to care for them. It's a slippery slope. We're seeing that in Canada. And so the church, I think, is also very aware of the danger this is posing to families in our intergenerational covenant. And so, and then I developed Five Wishes after living in an AIDS home, which is an advanced directive. And uh, so those are all things at agingwithdignity.org you can learn about. Uh, but it, it taught me the preciousness of life mm -hmm. and that God is the author of life and that we shouldn't be uh, having doctors turned into killers. And mm -hmm. so I really worry about euthanasia and this, uh, there's a better way. Families can plan for it, discuss it, and not treat dying just like a medical moment. It's a deeply spiritual, personal, emotional one and like it's lost sometimes. Yeah. Yes. When I heard about your document, and I, I haven't read your document, a Five Wishes document, I, I figured that it was um, something like the will to live, where you write up your desires and you get a power of attorney, a health power of attorney. So I figured that's what it was. And I don't want to spend the whole show on this, but what, what are the, it's more than that. It, it is that, but it's more than that. It's really helping you to prepare right. for your... Okay. Yeah, because four out of five Americans don't fill these out, and then a crisis strikes, and then there's panic, and there's a feud at the bedside, and it can really rupture family relationships. But if the talk's just about feeding tubes and ventilators, who right. wants to have that discussion? Right. So Five Wishes expands it to talk about forgiveness, to talk about how I want to be remembered, what I want my loved ones to know. It talks about dignity and comfort and pain management and things that just help people have a more hopeful sense that I have some control versus the ultimate control of deciding who lives and who dies, which of course be spread to the disabled. This mm -hmm. right to die is a right that the poor will get. If we are careful in America now, we can do something to improve end-of-life care, give more patients self-determination and say in their treatment, and have more family discussions so that we don't have these highly medicalized deaths. And it can, because very few people, the church's teachings are clear and what Five Wishes allows you to write is, I want the teachings of the Catholic Church followed, mm -hmm. period. Mm -hmm. You know, that's yeah. what mine says. Mm -hmm. and, but, it, but also it gives instructions about how I want to be cared for and how I want to be remembered and, and about closure and healing. So I think it's, that's why 41 million copies, 30 languages, it's spread. And uh, I'm thankful for that. 41 million copies. How long is the document? Eight pages and you're only filling out a couple. Then it's got a lot of signature requirements. Some states mm -hmm. have very unique requirements. So, yeah, but it's, and Catholics should be aware that the most important thing is to have a health care agent appointed, someone who can speak for you that knows your wishes. Right. Don't have some document you filled out 20 years ago. Right. Have an ongoing conversation with someone you trust who can speak for you when you can't. Right, because otherwise it becomes obsolete. And it's like, well, she, she wasn't in that kind of situation then. And know? Mother Teresa had her pain managed, you know, at the end. She, she took pain med med medicine when her back pain was disabling. Mm. Uh, but she also was at peace and she was suffering and she, she said to accept an offer. It gives an opportunity for individuals as you ponder to really enter into the passion of Christ. Mm -hmm. and with, but that also means that you manage your pain as mm -hmm. your conscience dictates, and it allows you to be family-centered care. I, I just think we've sometimes ruined how we, we've isolated it, and COVID was the worst, where a husband couldn't even be at the bedside oh, of a yes. wife. That was terrible. Mm -hmm. So this is at agingwithdignity.org. Right, so or fivewishes.org, right. Cur okay. And I think Mother Teresa teaches us today this this, the beauty of life is not diminished by aging. Sometimes we treat aging like it's a curse. Aging's a blessing, mm -hmm. and we need to reclaim that. That, the, that that season, I knew Mother the last 12 years of her life, got to observe her regularly. It was the most evangelical period of mm -hmm. her life. You know, she really was teaching her sisters how to accept death, how to accept life, eternal life, mm -hmm. how to embrace it. So I think we need to reclaim aging as a beautiful season, not something to be dreaded. Right, and so did Pope John Paul, right? That's right. I mean, they That's both, right. they were run in parallel. Yeah. And they both <laughs> taught us how to live and live well. That's right. And then they taught us how to die. Yeah. You know, and it's like you, you keep going until your last dying breath, until he says it's finished. Yeah. That's right. Right? You know, we kind of joke about it, many of us who are also pro-life. 
so we're really clear about the, the pre-born, the sanctity of life. But with the aging thing, it's kind of like we joke about our age or, you know, make up a different age number for ourselves. And, but we, really, we're part of this uh, not embracing the sanctity of life through every phase and stage. So I had a guy come up, he used to be my plumber years back, and he came up, got him after 10 or 15 years, he came back. As soon as he pulled up in the car, in his truck, he said, man, you're getting old. <laughs> and you know, and I said, yeah, I am. Yeah. I don't know anybody's getting younger. Right. You know, yeah, I am. And uh, this, is, this is what I look like, and this is what it is at this point in my life and my age. Right. And this is going to happen, so how do I live knowing my dignity in the Lord you know, what do I want to leave behind? What do I want to get ready for? And, but, but I think even us as pro-life people don't deal with that. We joke about That's that. That's right. And it's a put down on the sanctity of life at that stage and phase of life. I, it is. And what you were saying, Joy, earlier to me about how beautiful Mother was. I mean, she was more beautiful every year. Her mm -hmm. wrinkled face, her hands, her feet were a mess from all this. She mm -hmm. had misshaped feet because of the right. sandals being the wrong size. And none of that mattered. What emerged from her was her beautiful spirit her love of God, her love of neighbor, and her appreciation of the beauty of life. And that, that, that humanness was brilliant as she aged. Yeah. And I think it's sad to see nursing homes and assisted living facilities in places where no one has a visitor. Mm -hmm. It's really a call to the church to go and combat the disease of loneliness. And I think Mother Teresa always said that was the worst disease. It wasn't leprosy or AIDS, it was loneliness. Mm -hmm. So we really have a duty to go, I think, and help people to love and to be loved. That's what helps affirm their humanity. Yeah, she spoke about that. I don't know, when she was in Washington, one of the times that she came, she gave a number of addresses, but she talked about, you know, the scourge of loneliness in your house. Yes. In your home, yeah. your children. And, and now we see that in the midst of all the communication and technology, our children feel so alone, isolated, and, uh, you know, they don't solve their problems like we solved it through, you know, combating something or fighting about it, debating about it. They kill themselves. Yeah. Mm -hmm. the, the, you know, they're committing suicide. Yeah. And it, all this affluence and, and technology, your kids are alone. Like you don't need to go to Calcutta. Calcutta is in your house. That's right. And loneliness. That's right. And I think there's a call now to rehumanize. We, we've allowed technology to almost dehumanize our mm -hmm. relationships. Now they're talking about robots being introduced into long-term care facilities. I can't oh. think of a worse idea. Mm -hmm. it, that's the time of life more than ever where you need the human touch. I saw Mother Teresa just relish the company of her sisters. She just rejoiced in their bedside company when she was sick in the hospital. Yeah. I saw her there just so anxious to see Sister Nirmala come in the door. And, you know, this is the beauty of life. Uh, we need each other, and that can get lost in a highly technological world. Yeah. Well, I just saw an advertisement this morning. One of the biggest websites now out there is children playing. So people are going to this website so they can see how children play. It's like we've lost our minds. <laughs> but th when, when we live in a screen, right. I mean, I wasn't allowed right. to come in my house. I had right. seven brothers and sisters. You didn't come home <laughs> unless you needed to eat or your, your arm was hanging off or something. You were thrown outside. Right. You go out and play. Right. I mean, you just, you just didn't, I well, can't imagine. And so now you think of, and she was prophetic. Right. right, and she was prophetic in that way, and how she said it was loneliness, and then how she talked at the national prayer breakfast, right. and talked about our nation, yeah. you know, how we are with killing babies. Well, the church has warned us about this. Pope Benedict wrote eloquently about the threats that technology can pose to our interconnections and to the really the connective tissue that binds us together mm -hmm. as the body of Christ. So I I do see the church awake with this challenge before it. The age wave is upon us. The baby boom generation mm -hmm. is, thinks it's going to live forever. And so we really are called now to be our brother's keeper, mm -hmm. help people age, and affirm them in their aging that their life is beautiful. Mother Teresa's aging experience was radiant mm -hmm. with love and with faith. And that's really the beauty of a human. Yes. And that's like John Paul said about the gospel of life. And he said, don't ever be afraid to share the gospel of life. Yes. You may not use that term gospel of life, but it's already written upon the hearts of every human being. The yes. gospel of life is written there already. So you don't have to worry. God's gone before us through the natural law and it's really there. And somehow, some way, that's, that's like the Advent theme. Wake up, mm -hmm. be stirred, you're asleep. And all of a sudden, we say something along those lines and something, something comes up like, yes. it quickens this, is, us. this yes. is what I want. Mm -hmm. That's right. And mm -hmm. I think Mother had 
that kind of conscience and voice in the time that she lived. And that's why I think her influence in the 21st century will be even greater because she knew darkness mm. and she, she felt that absence of God some. And, and I talk about that in yes. the 11th chapter of the book. So she, I think that she is a guide for individuals that may feel lonely. Maybe their spouse is gone and they, they miss their spouse terribly and all. There's a guide in a way that you can take this life, make it li fulfilling, even in times of grief and sorrow, that God is with you, God walks with you. And I think the sacraments invite us to a deeper embrace of our mortality because it's in that embrace that we see our immortal lives emerge, you know, mm -hmm. our souls. And I just think Mother Teresa is going to be a very important voice in the 21st century on how yeah. we age. Well, and, and, and I love that you wrote this book because you're representing her. You know, they had the documentary, the Knights of Columbus came out with the documentary, because there is a generation. I mean, even you were sharing, even some of the new sisters coming along, they have to be educated on their founder. That's right. right? And so, and so if those who are, you know, in reckless abandonment to love and serve God, um, they need to be informed and empowered to say, who was this woman? Who are we following? Yeah. You know, so the world, yeah. because we are so lost, we have lost our way. Yeah, no, I know? think you're right. This has to be this, the sanctity of the human person, to love, to be loved from the moment of conception through death, natural death. I mean, it's, it's got to be what the world is yearning for, but mm -hmm. it needs to be represented to every generation. Somebody said, you know, God doesn't have grandchildren. We only can be converted again and again and again. But St. Uh, John Paul II and Mother Teresa, you know, portrayed this so beautifully that you can even make an argument against it, that if you're going to eliminate certain people or denigrate certain people, like, it just doesn't hold together. Well, that's this right. is what we're saying. This, right. this must have, still have an appeal if we would just speak it boldly. Yeah, that's why Mother said about abortion, that if a mother could take the life of her own child, what was left for society to protect? And now we see the attack at the other end of life. And you can mm -hmm. set your watch on this, taking a greater and greater profile, because we're watching other countries. And I'm hoping the disabled communities, the developmentally disabled and other, that we have advocates for them because they're going to be the ones that they're going to push out the door. Mm -hmm. But I think there's a better way, and that's why to love and to be loved, when you take the high road and you truly embrace your baptismal call mm -hmm. to celebrate that you are beloved, you are God's delight, and to celebrate that in each season in life, including when you're old and you may have Alzheimer's, you may have cancer, you are no diff, you are not your illness, and mm -hmm. you have the ability to shine as the saints shine. And I think Mother Teresa gave us a, a model on how to age with dignity. Mm -hmm. And now you also wrote this book because there were people who maybe didn't like her legacy, didn't like her beauty, didn't like her truth. Right. And so you write this, you wrote this even to defend that. Why? Because I think critics need to be rebutted. Otherwise mm -hmm. it becomes true, mm -hmm. you know, in the internet age. There's so much false information about Mother on the... So I took 5,000 words to go after Christopher Hitchens and some of the sisters that have left the community. Very few do, but the ones do, the, the liberal media will give them a big megaphone. Mm -hmm. And so to rebut what they said and to point out the her heroism of these women living in, I was just in Nairobi, and here are the sisters in the worst, one of the worst slums in the world, joyfully, cheerfully taking care of the disabled, taking care of unwed mothers that have children. I mean, it's inspirational what the missionaries of charity are living, and I hope the book introduces uh, the internet age to the beauty mm -hmm. of what the missionaries of charity are doing in the world. Yeah. We got about a minute and a half left. What can happen to families if they understand Mother Teresa? You know, what, what should we be doing as parents and as grandparents to pass on this, this way? Because it's really a way mm -hmm. of encountering the human person. Mother Teresa said that a life that's not lived for others is not worth living. Mm -hmm. I think if that were in every home that challenged people to go from a self-centered life to an other-minded life. You know, we, even colleges now, we infantilize college-age kids. We make it like college is an extension of childhood. And that's why you have trigger warnings and all this nonsense about censored speech. It seems to me that we, we need to recover, I think, uh, the beauty of our lives is to be servants of others. That's what Jesus taught us, to serve from beneath, to wash the feet of others, to care for others. Look, I was, I'm was i not Mother Teresa. I'm never going to be Mother Teresa, and I shouldn't be. I should be myself, and I can be better. Right. And Mother helped me to become better. Thank mm -hmm. God I, I would have made a mess of my life, I can promise you. 
if I hadn't met Mother. And I just think the book talks about this invitation to change, to grow, and to be better. And you'd be surprised what God yeah. can do. Mm -hmm. Those who are forgiven much love much. Thank you for your love mm -hmm. and for uh, pouring it out for this great you book. You guys are great. Thank to you. love Thank and you. be loved. You can go to EW10RC. Um, Dot com, right? Yes. EWNRC.com and get the book To Love and Be Loved, A Personal Portrait of Mother Teresa by Jim Tui. Plenty more to come. We'll be right back. Don't go away. Welcome back. We're at home with Jim and Joy. And now again, we have Father John Paul. Two <laughs> days in a week. It's unbelievable. <laughs> it really is. Father, what did you think of Jim Tui's mm. sharing today? It was great just to be reminded of uh, St. Teresa of Calcutta again. And we have forgotten. It's almost like a spiritual amnesia. Mm. John Paul II, um, you often he don't hear so much about him anymore right. in the world and in the, in the church. And we need to pass on that legacy because there's a whole generation that needs to be reminded yeah. too of the legacy of uh, Mother Teresa. You know, I was thinking, in, you know, just, you know, 2,000 years ago, God, God the Son was crucified on the cross. And uh, while he hung on the cross, he cried out, I thirst. And um, that voice continues to echo. Mm -hmm. He's the eternal word. So everything that he says has eternal consequences. I thirst continues to echo throughout our world. And Mother Teresa knew that. She, it's like she had a radar up. Her antenna mm -hmm. was up. Yeah. And she caught you know, the voice of Jesus crying out, I thirst, in everyone she would encounter. You know, I, I was thinking when we were doing, when I was listening to the show and and just thinking about the voice of Jesus crying out, I thirst. I was thinking about just the people that come into the pregnancy center. Mm -hmm. You know, that they, whether they know it or not, they are crying out, the voice of Jesus is in them, I thirst. Mm -hmm. And you see that. Yeah. Mm -hmm. You know, I, I see the way that, that the people are treated, the women mm -hmm. and men are treated at her choice when they come in there. You see, the you see Jesus in them mm -hmm. and you treat them like Christ. Um, and, um, you know, that, um, the voice of Christ needs to be quenched. Um, and that cry of Christ, I thirst needs to be satiated. Mm -hmm. Um, and that was the spirituality. That was the whole life of mother Teresa was to satiate the thirst of Jesus yeah. in everyone. Mm -hmm. For yeah. lives, for souls, for, for people, souls. for their situation, yeah. for what's happening. Whether they know it or not, mm -hmm. it could be someone that is completely, anti-gospel yeah. and like against Christ mm -hmm. that that Christ because he's become man because he take he's taken on flesh he's united himself to every man woman and child whether a person knows it or not Fulton Sheen used to say that that whether a person knows it or not it's Christ crying out in them you know Beautiful. close this with a prayer and blessing father sure family may the Lord bless you and keep you may he turn his face to you and be merciful to you May show you his kindness and give you his peace. May Almighty God bless you, the Father and the Son and the Holy Spirit. Mm -hmm. Amen. Amen. Go in peace. So blessed Advent to you. Wake up. Be alert. Be awake. For Jesus Christ is coming perpetually to us in the sacraments, in other people. When you look at yourself in the mirror, what do you think? You should seek the face of Christ even in yourself. To love is the way to heaven. But we need to receive love as well. There are numerous people that they want to love you, and yet we kind of put it off to love and to be loved. May we live it out this Advent season and all the days of our lives. Mm. Keep it on EWTN. Bye now.